Miles was always uh, a kid that loved life. He was easy going. No matter what was going on, what was happening, Miles was ready to go. He had a great sense of humor. He was just a fun little boy. He was a very hard worker, you know, when it came to sports particularly. Just going through life with him was just a, a precious time for me as a mom. It was around his 11th grade year that we began to see Miles drift and pull away from spiritual things, the disinterest in, you know, in church, um, you know, the choice of uh, his friends, um, you know, what he was doing, what he was involved in, and uh, he, you know, went through the motions, but we could, we could tell that um, Miles was drifting, and um, so that's, that's when it started. In some ways, you know, you, at, you, you ask yourself the question, what did we do wrong? Ha what happened here? I had two incredible parents who loved the Lord, who taught us at an uh, early age what it meant to follow Jesus. In high school, I loved uh, sports. Football uh, was something I was extremely passionate about. I just remember at that time uh, beginning to long for things of this world. And I specifically remember girls became more appealing and I remember taking shots of vodka and smoking black and milds, and it started there and it had only began to progress from that point. Thinking if I get this girl or if I get this scholarship or I get this starting spot or I get this job, that maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel something inside that's, um, that I've never felt before. And it really began to lead me down a road of brokenness. Started out really just angry with God and then it was, crying out to God, then it was screaming out to God. There were you know, a lot of days that I'm just laying flat out on the floor, just begging God uh, to be able to bring our son back home to us and bring him back with a, a different heart and to change him. It's very hard because your children are your heart. Um, and so it's very painful. It was very, very hard. And um, I claimed Jeremiah 29, 11. Um, it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, to give you a hope and a future. And I just kept claiming that and just um, just believing that, um, that God would bring him back, back to him and back to us. It was in Chico, California. I came in after a party and I was tired and I was exhausted. And I just didn't want to continue in this life of only considering myself. I just specifically remember that night looking over on the bedside table and seeing my Bible there on the shelf and saying, wow, I've looked for everything high and low in this world, but I haven't looked to that one time in these past five or six years of my life. And so I went over to the bedside table and knelt down and picked up the Bible and began to open it and read it. And cry out to God, and in that moment, I just asked, Lord, please, please show me what it is to follow you. I wanna know you. I'm empty. This world can't fulfill this void that I've been trying to pursue. I remember the Lord met me in that moment there in my room, and that was when things began to shift. And even when he told me about it, as much as I wanted to jump up and down and say, man, is this the moment, God? It wasn't until he got off uh, the airplane when he came home that he came walking toward me. And the minute I saw him, I knew there was something different. And then when he began to talk, I knew that God had done a miracle. My eyes just began to turn away from myself and onto Jesus. And so naturally my response was, I want to do something that serves others. I want to give my life away truly. So now I'm happily married to my wife. We have a son whose name is Koa and he's one years old and we live in an area called Titusville and Titusville is one of the oldest historical African-American communities in the city of Birmingham and it's 
located right across the street from where Dr. King was incarcerated in the Birmingham City Jail. I run and own an indoor training facility that really just was birthed out of a place of wanting to bring the kingdom through athletics. And so for us, athletics was just a vehicle to be intentional with the gospel and to share Jesus, uh, just being able to grow and to disciple and to see boys become men. Don't give up hope and don't stop loving uh, your prodigal. Don't stop loving them and, and being there for them. No matter how hard it gets, God's gonna be there and he's gonna pick us up and he's gonna carry us through. He taught me so much about trusting him and my faith was strengthened and stretched in a way that I don't think it could have been otherwise. We serve a God that can reach down into the deepest, darkest pits of your soul and pull you out from that place and call you redeemed and call you beloved. God is enough. God will pull you from wherever you're at, whatever pursuits you're in, wherever you're at in life, wherever you're at in your journey, that God is there and he, he is there and He will be with you. It just takes you calling out and desiring Jesus.